Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It's been a little while. So today I wanted to go ahead and show you guys another character. This video is not going to be designed for the Righteous Fire build in any way. Remember, if you have any questions about the Righteous Fire build, there are many guides on my YouTube. And of course, you can always import my Path of Exile profile via POB. So today we're going to go ahead and explore Death's Oath Occultist. Uh, I'm going to jump right on into a map here real fast. Before I start, uh, my Death's Oath is very different than other leagues that I've played it. It's also very different than most Death's Oath builds you see. Um, I haven't really done much research in it since I've played it a lot, but from what I know, a lot of people are playing it um, either Caustic Arrow with a bow, or they use the new Cane of Coolmac, which can roll insane damage mods. I am opting out of both of those ways and playing it the original way I used to play it with Blight. Um, so, with that being said, I just want to show you guys some quick pieces of gear so this is where my blight is located it's very mediocre it's basically void manip efficacy blight control destruction level 17 gems nothing good here my chest piece is pretty nuts i got lucky with a plus one gem slam with increased damage and then most of my defensive layers come from my verity's veil with that being said i'm gonna go clear a map and we'll talk about the character so i've got a tier 15 race course with sextants on here, and I'm gonna put some bloodlines. Let's go. When I'm ready and not before. The single target can go up quite a bit with uh, investment. Lots of investment. I'd say this character right now is around ten plus exalts in terms of investment, but the reason why it's ex it's so expensive is specifically because I'm trying to build a one-hand variant that's tanky. Um, you can use, like, a Cane of Unraveling as an example. And Cane of Unraveling is, like, a 1C unique. You can just 5-link it for, like, nothing. And you can already clear low-tier red content. You're just not going to be tanky. Uh, my build variant is meant to become tanky, slash at least have decent survivability. Okay. Um, I don't really want to do Legion because I feel like I'm going to get one shot from mobs off screen, but that's okay. Actually, wait a minute. What happens if you activate a Legion while inside this? Are they going to shoot me off screen? Are they allowed to do that? Did I just PK myself? Uh, this is very weird. Hmm. Oh boy. I think I, I think I regret this. I'm pretty sure the mobs over here are actually shooting. They are shooting me. Rude. <laughs> okay. So I learned not to do that. That's good to know. Let's see. Hold on. Can I uh, Can I just zoom through here? And Okay. There we go. Just zoomed and Vol blighted him. Your arteries constrict. Yeah, Legion is the one exception of content that's still Omega Rippy, Legion and Metamorph. Legion, because because the AI of the monsters hits from so far away, they don't Confront really that. care about my curses, which does suck. Oh, a cloak of defiance. It's kind of cool. Nice. Night's madness strains away all hope. I guess this is also a good showcase since Stone Circles is kind of like the one that this build is the weakest on. Killing is no problem and surviving is no problem, but being forced to sit in a stone circle in tier 15 red maps can be a bit spook. Can you feel death coiling around your heart? This build runs no block. I mean, block is just for my shield and no dodge. It's pretty much purely on mitigation. When I'm ready and not before. Rare is the breath of living air. Oh, 
Okay, good. Again. Do, do, do. Can I slash deaths? Sure, we had, I think, two deaths. One of them was really bullshit. I don't remember what happened, but it was really stupid. The other one I died because I was leveling gems up and some mobs just insta gibbed me. For Death's Oath, it's pretty tanky. Considering I just went straight into red tier content for the most part. And I've been doing like Guardians and uh, four, four Socket Watchstones or Conquerors. So, I mean, I've been doing most of the content. Here is our single target. Again, not very good at all, but just flipped my gems and could have a lot of extra damage if I uh, continue to invest in the build. Well, let me just turn off this Gloom Shrine since it's uh, not an accurate showcase. RF more for general content slash bossing. Death's Earth is a much better mapper in terms of speed. Oh. No bosses. Okay, this is an easy AFK blight. Wow. Okay, I think that's everything, right? Did I clear this? I forgot. Oh, yeah, okay. Cool. Alright, so to talk about defensive layers, this is where it gets a little complex, um, where the build kind of excels compared to the other variants that, again, I don't know because I'm not trying to... I don't really know what they do. I just know that Death's Oath is typically squishy. So I'm going to show you guys what I've done to counter that so that you don't have a bad experience dying in red tier maps. All right, step one. Step one is we use a Viridi's Veil. Uh, this makes it so damage of enemies hitting you is unlucky. So what that means is if a mob hits you one time, its damage is rolled twice. Say the mob does between 300 and 800, right? The game calculates as if it hits you twice, so if it hits for 542 and then 796, the unlucky will pull the 542, which is great, because it's, it's basically rolling the damage twice. Second, you are hexproof if you have a ring in the right slot. Um, we already have the right and left, but hexproof is great because it bypasses all curses. You don't have to do that. I did it because if I don't roll hexproof, then I have to roll... Uh, warding on a flask, and if I roll warding on a flask, I cannot have an adrenaline, which is 30% movement speed. So I went with that option. Uh, and then, you take no damage from critical strikes if you have a magic ring in the left slot. This is massive for builds that run high mitigation with low effective life. This voids critical strike multiplier, which is arguably one of the scariest mods in the entire game. A lot of people don't realize crit multi is what causes 
like the immortal builds or not immortal but like very tanky builds to get one shot um okay so going with that inside the Viridi's veil we are using a level four enhance that is plus two from this which gives 40 percent quality to the active gems so i'm running a level 24 despair with 60 percent quality which pretty much attributes for half of our damage which is why our clear is so good and our map or our boss killing is so bad even in tier 16 content the despair will carry no problem but for bossing it's a little bit slower but our bossing is still manageable because we don't get one shot so i'm i'm totally okay with it and again i can get a lot more damage i just have to invest then i'm also running an enfeeble which is level 23 with 40 or 61 percent quality very strong uh, rare or unique enemies deal 16% less, magic enemies deal 32% less, and then the reduced accuracy. The reduced accuracy scales very well, I think, uh, with flesh and stone, which is what we're also running here. So, that covers the flesh and stone, the despair, and the enfeeble. Next up, Impresence. Impresence is a nice pickup because you don't have to worry about rolling since harvest gone. So this is a very good piece of gear because... It gives life, it gives chaos res, it gives damage over time, it gives maddening presence. Maddening presence is another layer of protection. I believe it's 10% less damage taken, and then you deal, I think, increased damage. Uh, and then it makes it so we can actually run our despair, because it completely voids the despair, um, the despair requirement of the mana. So, another thing is I have allocated Disciple of the Unyielding. Maybe not the best annoy, but again, I'm trying to not die. So what this does is it gives us one minimum endurance charge and in total 24% increased damage. Increased damage is treated as a global modifier, meaning it affects damage over time. So it works for my Blight and it works for my, um, my Death's uh, Oath and it works for the Profane Bloom Explosion. So that's really good since it's, it's essentially global damage. So this gives us one of our minimum endurance charges. And then our two rings, I try to get a maximum life roll. So this is a T1 life roll. Then you bless the implicit for perfect chaos. And then I crafted minimum endurance charges my suffix. So one plus one plus one is three. Easy math, right? Then of course you could catalyst this for either life or chaos damage. I just haven't went that far to do it yet. Uh, moving on to the next piece of gear. Let's go ahead and move our way to the shield. The shield is probably the piece of gear I spent the least on. I spent 10c buying it off of trade. The main reason I went with this is because it gives minimum frenzy, which gives us damage. It, more importantly, it gives us damage when we're bossing because it's minimum frenzy, so it's not a gimmick. You just always have it. It also has 100 plus life, and then I could craft res on it. My chess piece, uh, very lucky. We double corrupted two death oaths. This one ended up going plus one gems with increased damage. So in here, I'm running Swift Affliction, Efficacy, Life Tap, in K or Awakened in KOE, Void Manip, and Lesteration, which actually needs to be Vault. When I'm ready and not before. I don't know if that rounded it up. Either way, I'm happy. Okay, um, so there's these are pretty much the best colors you can use. There's not really much flexibility you can do with here. The old way of using Arcane Surge is gone now. The reason why it's gone is you can just put life tap in your chess piece and then it does increased damage from quality and more damage if you have life tap buff, which we'll get into that shortly. So, speaking of life tap, let's talk about the life tap setup. I currently have in my shield divergent life tap, which can be level one. I use divergent because the quality, uh, quality gives it longer duration. So if I hold alt, the additional effect gives it quality, right? Which is the well, never mind. Uh, then there's Shield Charge and Fortify. I'm not running faster attacks right now because I don't have the Link set up and I feel fast enough. I'm super Link Star. So what this means is, if you look at my Death South tooltip, it's currently 53k, of course, not counting the Despair. When I Shield Charge, it goes up to 70k almost. This is the Life Tap buff. So this leads me into my next layer. The Life Tap buff gives you Flask Recovery Rate, and then on my tree... I have two Brood for Potency. So two Brood for Potency is 20% life and mana recovery, and then increased flash charges gain. So this is 40% um, life effect of my life flask. So I currently am running an ample eternal flask of dowsing. I have to re-roll this, but it's good enough for now. So I get 15 of 64 charges. It gets 40% increased effect, 
And then with Rislatha, if I ever take a massive hit and I go below 50% and I click it, I get an additional 60% life recovery from the flask. Um, I've done most Guardians already. The life flask is more than enough sustained to keep me alive during the fights. Okay. Another layer of defense would be Brush for Death. When you're doing ultimatums and mapping, having one Brush for Death allows you to basically keep yourself topped off all the time. A big thing about this, though, with my setup, is I need to run four Flows of Life because my build does not have much life. So our mediums are basically Flow of Life, Brush with Death, Brood for Potency, Flow of Life, and then Brood for Potency, Flow of Life, and Flow of Life and Eldritch Inspiration. The Eldritch Inspiration is just because I have mana issues, so using one Eldritch Inspiration, it gives me max mana. The max mana helps scale the Arcane Surge because it goes off your max mana since we have no form of mana investment whatsoever. So, going with the next setup, um, I'm going to go over my boots. My boots have nothing special. It's pretty much just Onslaught. Uh, I didn't want to have to use an Onslaught flask, and I don't have a Stygian belt, so this is where my Onslaught comes from. Just life, dex, movement speed, Onslaught. My setup is Dash, Second Wind, which actually needs quality. When I'm ready, and not before. Hello. So dash, second wind, steel skin on left click, and arcane surge. So this is whenever I'm mapping, I occasionally have a random steel skin that goes off, that protects me for 2.4k, which works out really well when you have good layers of mitigation. Uh, and then on top of the 2.4k, it is on, constantly proccing arcane surge, and as does my dash, constantly proc the arcane surge. So that is permanently up. Moving to my belt, I went with an elder leather belt. Um, I was going to go with the Stygian, but it's much more expensive. I was trying to get T1 life with percent life. I didn't hit it, so I just crafted life because I got six resi sick resistances on the belt. And my build is a bit resistance starved, so this works out super well. Um, then, moving on to the next one, my gloves. My gloves have a Delirium Essence, so this is where our Blight sits. I want to take this into uh, Aceling Research and Betrayal and Unveil and try to get plus two AOE gems, because that would be massive. I spent about 300 Chaos rolling Delirium Essences trying to get Delirium, which is the 30% more damage over time, with Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier, but that's just so unlikely to hit. So I got something like this, which works out pretty well, and we'll worry about crafting it later. This is where my Blight sits, so Void Manip, Efficacy, Blight, and Control Destruction. As you can see, the gems are 17 out of 21 with no Awakened gems, so there is room for improvement here. Then I've got my weapon, uh, Chaos Damage Over Time Multiplier with Damage Over Time Multiplier with Increased Chaos Damage. Did not craft this. I bought it for about 75C. Um, I am working on crafting this, which I snagged, which is basically just a wand with 10% Chaos Over Time Implicit, which will be better than what I have. It's just crafting is such a pain in the ass with that harvest right now. I'm not really sure how to go about doing it. I'm probably going to try using Chaos Fossils. That pretty much covers the majority of that. Um, so yeah, basically TLDR, the reason why we don't die um, is because... One more defensive layer. On our small jewels, we are running three Born of Chaos. So three Born of Chaos gives you nine maximum Chaos Resist. Nine maximum Chaos Resist plus Divine Flesh gives you 89% Chaos Res. So Chaos is not a problem. 50% of elemental damage is taken as chaos. Elemental still does a bit of damage, but remember, if it's a hit, then it's rolled twice. It's rolled as unlucky. It cannot do crit damage, and 50% is taken as chaos. So as long as we're using our life flask properly, you're not going to die to elemental. Our physical is countered via our very high level and feeble, plus malediction, along with the impresence, which gives us the... Uh, less damage taken from that, and then the three endurance charges with our flasks running. So that's where pretty much most of it comes from. And then for our damage, our Death Oath is doing enough damage right now where I don't have to worry about scaling aura effect, and I can simply focus on scaling damage over time multiplier, which will scale the Blight, which is what we're trying to do right now. That pretty much covers everything um, that I could think of with the build. Uh, the next couple of levels, since I'm 94, I'm pretty much all life, so I'll be getting over 6k life. I have a nice juicy life cluster sitting right here. Um, yeah, and then the next projects are, I'm farming for some enchant on my helmet, I don't know yet, 
any enchant reservation of any of my auras would be good because I can directly remove reduced reservation effect here. Um, so re removing this gives me more life. Uh, despair effect is damage. Blight damage is damage. Uh, and then I'm going to try uh, double corrupting after I get a good helm enchant. And then, of course, the glove project that we were talking about. Anyway, that's pretty much about it. Hope you guys had a wonderful time. Hope you guys enjoyed yourselves. Remember, if you liked the video, please feel free to like, share, and subscribe. And don't forget, you can catch me streaming live every day, but Sundays at twitch.tv slash pox. Take care. Catch you guys all later.